Red Cross is supposed to be areas of the body where people have suffered injuries. Yeah, oh, I see. A set of injuries that consistently happen. And that's trying to show where many of those are. So wrists, elbows, spinal column, hands. Are these similar to some of the injuries these workers suffered down in Columbia? Exactly, or? that's what it is. It's, okay. And furthermore, depending what type of work they did, so if they're welders, if they're electricians, depending on what part of the operation they were in, they have similar patterns of injuries. Okay. So as far as how this happened, that's a pretty clear clue. Yeah, it's been going. It's happened a year ago, I hear. It's been happening four years. Uh, four years. Wow. For a number of years. In practice, people have gotten hired in their 20s and healthy, and they've gotten fired in their 30s and crippled. Oh wow. And it's, there are enough people looking for jobs in Colombia. There's always somebody else to take that job and willing to take the risk. Of course. Are desperate. It pays better than many jobs. It is more highly skilled, but it ruins the worker in a short period of time, and they're left with nothing. Now, this is a, a plant that's owned by GM, that manufactures for GM? Or? The company in Colombia is called Colmotores, like Colombian Motors. Colmotores, so okay. It's GM Colmotores, but it's a subsidiary of GM worldwide. Oh, okay. So it is part of the GM corporate entity, oh. although it's a, you know, a subsidiary in Colombia. It's a subsidiary, subsidiary, yeah. yeah. They've been there, I think, since 1956. It's not something new. Okay. And they have this one plant in Bogota, which assembles a variety of vehicles, which is part of the problem. Because here, the assembly plant is going to change from making one model of vehicle to another retools the line. Yeah. You re-engineer the line so you do it as efficiently as possible, which includes ergonomically, right? Exactly, yeah. But for example, I was talking to a guy, an auto worker in the U.S., car that had been made in Mexico was brought back to the U.S. to be made. They looked at how it was done in Mexico. It was convertible. In Mexico, the person installing the roof held the roof up by resting it upon his or her head while they installed it. Oh, just common sense, better work practice. And the guy in the U.S. said, no way are we going to do that. We're going to rig up something to support that weight. So you can picture what happens to a worker in Colombia, you know, more of that sort of thing. Yeah, that's an injury risk right there. Repetitively yeah. doing that, so you get specific injuries related to the type of work that you do. Wow, it's, it's a shame. It's a shame they went through this for all this time, and then now they're just kind of getting some exposure and, and it's solidarity. But it's well, On top of that, GM Columbia has made changes inside the plant in response to this pressure. They've started to install robots. They've started to rotate people so they're not at the same workstation all the time. Those are good steps. They benefit the workers still employed, but these guys already out in the street got nothing. So they have succeeded through their pressure in winning something for many other people and for the future, but they themselves are still out there right now starving literally. Yeah. Up till now they've been starving in figurative terms. They've had to skimp on food, they've had their page has videos up with pictures of empty refrigerators. Yeah. No workman's comp, nothing, right? Right. No workers comp, no disability, whatever odd jobs they could find, piecing that together. Medical care is a big thing because if their injuries were properly classified as medical, they'd be covered for their medical care, which is exactly. something they really need. It's not like a basically healthy person who might or might not need it. It's someone who definitely needs it. Oh, yeah. But because they don't have that classification, they don't have medical coverage. It's like being uninsured here. What happens if you get sick? They, you know, if the kids get hurt, they can't take them to the doctor. They have medical issues themselves, they can't go to the doctor. So it's really just... it's a question of basic justice. Yeah, basic justice. Just simple, basic needs. And, and w that's what's worker abuse, blatant worker it abuse. It I mean, it, it, they got injured in the factory, and they, they told the, their bosses, so to speak, that they were injured in, inside, and then they were just fired, and they were not given no opportunity for workman's comp. If they didn't tell the boss directly, the company clinic, which examines them, knew what happened to them. So if you go to the clinic and they find you a problem with your shoulder... Pretty soon, word found its way to management that you have a problem with your shoulder, and after a while, you were probably presented a voluntary quit agreement, which offered you a bonus. That you take this, sign this now, you get this bonus, and we're all through. And if you didn't agree to that, and many people who are not, they're not lawyers, they're not accountants. Yeah. So they might agree to it up front. Here's this money being dangled in front of you. People who did not agree to it were then told, well, you know, we're going to accuse you of stealing from the plant. Or someone might might discover you've been cheating with that guy's wife. And they're probably coming after you. One way or another, they were coerced then. Or the third method is falsification of documents. 
Okay. There was a labor inspector who signed off on falsified documents. So a document would be made up saying that so-and-so voluntarily quit, which the person never saw. This inspector would validate as legitimate, that'd be on file, ostensibly for the purpose of public records, it's a voluntary quit. What actually happened is they got fired. So the company would say they weren't fired, and in some technical sense, that might be literally true, but the reality of what happened is yes, they were fired. Yeah, it's just kind of a cover-up to a PR move, so to speak, for the company. A PR move and a legal liability move, where they shed their liability by dumping the workers in a way other than outright firing them. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's terrible. But you are with uh, We Are Peace, I believe. It's a relatively uh, new organization. I'm involved with Witness for Peace, which has been around since the 80s, actually. Oh, okay. I had never heard of it up until yeah. this point. But, yeah, yeah. It started up at the time of the, the whole situation with Nicaragua and the Contras and all that. Oh, yeah. It's a way of being in solidarity with people in Latin America who are being victimized by U.S. either official or corporate policies. And much of what Witness for Peace does is take groups to Latin America to meet face-to-face with these workers, which is how Paige and I and two other people in Portland became aware of this. We met them in November of last year. Okay. They already were in occupation at that time. So since November of last year, we've been in continuous contact with the situation. So you know exactly what's going on down there in and South America. And we brought America. the president of this group, Jorge Pato, we brought him to the U.S. in May. We were able to chip in together and raise enough money and get the visas. We okay. bring him to Chicago for the Labor Notes Conference and to Detroit to meet with the United Auto Workers. So we spent time with him both there and here. And Paige went back to Columbia in June and spent a, a week with them okay. in their home. So we know this personally. It's not like somebody told me what I'm telling you. I'm mm-hmm. telling you what I saw directly with my own eyes. I've seen the scars on a man's body. It's not like this wow. is a, a secondhand story. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's terrible when, I mean, they actually sewed their lips together. And, yes. and it, you know, that's extreme solidarity hunger strike. I mean. They want to make clear how, how serious it is. And I think they didn't tell us until they'd already made the commitment. And I think their point was, this is where it's headed anyway. And rather than just silently die from neglect, at least make a fight out of it and make it public. Yeah. And let people know what's going on. I think that's why they did it the way they did. Yeah, and now it's brought upon a National Day of Action today. Right. Yeah. And obviously they're very... No one should underestimate the seriousness of the commitment here. It's hard in our comfortable circumstances to imagine someone doing something like this. Yeah, especially. But they yeah. mean it. These guys are serious. And it's not it's not something, it's not a decision that came too hastily. They've been out there for over a year. They talked about it some a while back. It's not something that was a snap decision. They considered this. They know what, what it means. Do you, do you have any idea of um, how long they're going with this? Or is this going to be until they get satisfied? They plan so, to go to the death. They plan to go the until death. they win or until they die. Typically in a hunger strike, we know with Cameron here recently, people followed that. Typically... About 50 days, about two months out is when it gets very grave. Some of these people already have health challenges, and they're outdoors in a climate that gets cold and damp. Yeah, so the, the time frame for them may well be shorter, particularly if two of them are diabetic. Yeah. They've already passed out a couple times. They are taking fluids, but... Uh, That's what I hear, yeah. yeah. The urgency is great. The urgency is immediate. Yeah, I think more and more people need to know the true story from people like you who have been down there and seen it firsthand account. Because a lot of times we just believe what, what our, either our government tells us or what the general media tells us. A lot of times they don't tell us nothing. I haven't seen anything on corporate media news about this at all. Nothing. There was a little bit of coverage, believe it or not, with Fox and the Wall Street Journal in Latin America. Fox and Wall Street yeah, Journal. But that's in Latin America. In Latin America. So we do need to get it into the U.S. consciousness as well. Yeah, definitely. One definitely. thing people can do if they have YouTube available, go to uh, YouTube and look at Aso Today Cool, A-S-O-T-R-E-C-O-L. Okay. There's a channel of videos. They're short, most of them just a few minutes, but they're the workers and their families talking in Spanish with subtitles. Aso Toll, I've been to that channel. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah, seen so one of the videos. Yeah, and that's a better, I mean, they can tell you directly, even more directly than I can, it's the workers themselves. Okay, and then, and then your name was? I'm John Walsh. John, John Walsh, and you're with? Witness for Peace. Yeah. Witness for Peace. Right. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks. Joe and a Bobby, boldly going where the corporate media won't.